Today, we're adding two kilowatts of power, tripling the original runtime of this device. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Hey, welcome back guys. Jason here, KM4ACK. You may have seen the recent video I did on the Opus One, at least that's how I think you pronounce it. That's what I'm going with anyway. After I did the review on that, I reached back out to Opus and told them I was interested in taking a look at this expansion pack that you see in front of me today. I was really, really impressed with the capabilities of this pack, but I wanted a bit more runtime. This expansion battery gives us an additional 2,000 watt hours of power in addition to the original 1,000 watt hours we had in this pack. So combined together, it gives us three kilowatts of power. Now, there was a couple of unanswered questions that I left after I did the review on this, and we will be covering that today. First of all, can we recharge these devices direct from a solar panel without a solar charge controller? And the other thing I wanted to cover was, will these produce any RFI for ham radio? Now, I really wasn't thinking ham radio for either of these boxes, uh, and it certainly wasn't on my mind when I did the review of this one. I have other battery boxes designed to run my radios. I was really looking at this device and now both of these combined to power other things in the event that we lose commercial power. Things like refrigerators and freezers. I want to be able to keep those running just as much as I want to keep my radios running. Now, taking a closer look at the front of the expansion pack, we do not get the AC inverter with the expansion pack, but you do get two more USB-C ports, both capable of 100 watts, and we get four more USB-A style ports. This expansion pack also includes a 12 volt, 30 amp power, uh, power pole connection right here. And that is one thing that was a bit lacking on the Mega One. We only got 12 volts at 10 amps out of it. On the other side of the device, we do get the same 12 volt, 10 amp uh, circuitry that we saw in the Mega One. We do get the power port uh, right here so that we can plug in things that would normally connect to a cigarette lighter plug. And then again, we get the two 5.5 by 2.1 millimeter barrel connector jacks. And we get the nice display right there in the middle. Just like on the original pack, each of these sections can be turned on and off independently so that you only are using what you need at that particular time. Now, I will admit this is a heavy setup right here. This comes in a little over 41 pounds. Now, let's go ahead and check the dimensions on this device real quick. So, the width on this this way is 18 inches. Looking at it front to back, we're at about 11 inches, and then the height of it is going to be about two inches. Now, when we stack these two together, uh, it does become a fairly large unit. In fact, uh, you can barely see me. I kind of look like Kilroy back here. <laughs> But anyway, um, so it is a large unit. Now, the cool thing about it is you can use this one by itself, you can use this one by itself, or you can tie the two of these together to give you that full three kilowatts of available power. If we look on the side of the unit, you will see that opening up this port, we only have the Anderson power pole input. So we can charge this from solar or we can charge this direct from the car. You cannot charge the expansion pack from commercial power by itself. You will need to be using both of these units together in order to charge it from commercial power. Now, in order to connect these together, you're going to use the included power cable that they put in the box with the expansion battery. You've got a port on the Mega One and then you've got two ports down here on the expansion pack. This allows you to stack multiple expansion packs on top of one another. To connect these up, you simply plug it into the top port on the expansion pack and then into the single port on the Mega One. Once those are connected together, you can simply turn on either the top unit or the bottom unit and it will go ahead and turn on the other unit for you. So you see when I powered this one up, this one automatically came online. Now this expansion cable is held firmly in place. You do have to press down on the little button before you can pull it out of the unit. 
Now, taking into consideration that it took roughly 1.3 hours to charge this one from commercial power, if you're feeding it the full 1300 watts, you can estimate somewhere between three and four hours if you're trying to charge both of these from commercial power. Obviously, it's going to take longer if we try to do that with solar. Now, speaking of solar, you can absolutely plug in the panel direct to one of these units. I did set mine up outside just to verify that everything was going to work correctly. Now in the box for this unit, I was provided with three different cables. First, we have that uh, power connection cable that allows you to connect the two boxes together. In addition to that, I got a separate cable uh, with this unit that gave me power poles on one end and the MC4 connectors to connect a solar panel on the other end. The last cable that I got gives me power poles on one side and this odd little connector. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus on that. It's this odd little connector that I'm not familiar with, but this is another solar type uh, connector. So some solar panels apparently have this style connector on it. They do include that if your panels have that particular connector. All right, so let's check this thing out and see if it's going to produce any RF, uh, RFI on the HF bands. First of all, I'm looking at 20 meters here and I'm using the uh, radio in the truck. And on 20 meters, you can see that we've got virtually no noise level. Now, let's go ahead and change this to 40 meters and see what the 40 meter band looks like right here. I will need to tune the antenna for this. I'm using that ATOS uh, antenna on the back of the truck. So we'll give that a second to tune and then we'll take a look at the noise floor on 40 meters. All right, there it is uh, tuned for 40 meters and you can see that we've basically got zero noise here right now. Now, let me go ahead and connect up. What we're going to do is we're going to connect the Mega One, then we're going to try it on the expansion pack, and then we will tie both of those together and see what it looks like. All right, so we're connected to the B2 expansion pack, and you'll see on 40 meters, I still have zero noise. Let's go ahead and check 20 before we change over to the Mega One itself. So I'll select uh, 20 meters and then go ahead and retune that antenna for 20 to see what the noise level looks like. All right, and as you can see, we've got zero noise on 20 meters, running the radio from the 12 volt port on the B2 expansion pack. All right, we had to get a little creative here on the Mega One. I am connected to this 12 volt 10 amp socket using a 5.5 by 2.1 barrel connector here. And that comes down to the power pole that then goes to the radio. Let's check that noise level. And as you can see on 20 meters, the noise floor is still virtually non-existent. Now let's go ahead and change that over to 40 meters and take a look at it as well. All right, and as you can see, still there is no noise, so no RFI being generated by this unit. Now, I want to connect the two units together and run this test one last time. All right, so take a look around here on the side. You can see that uh, connector here and here connecting the two units together. And then I have the radio connected to that 12 volt 30 amp port and just the DC side on right now. But you know, just for the fun of it, let's go ahead and turn on this AC circuit as well. So now we're powering the AC inverter as well as the 12 volts down here. And let's just see if we get any noise whatsoever. All right, again, we're taking a look at 40 meters, and as you can see, I'm not even able to tune the radio because it is perfectly tuned as far as um, the radio is concerned. We'll move down, just move it a little bit, and I'm not hearing any noise out of that. Not seeing anything on the meter, not hearing anything erratic on the band. Let's go ahead and check 20 meters next. And we'll retune that antenna for 20, just to make sure we're not seeing any type of RFI. And as you can see, the noise floor did not go up at all. I hope you found the information helpful. Be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.